hello guys so welcome to my channel so in this channel we'll be doing about uh, water technology and water treatment so water technology and water treatment comes under engineering chemistry so the engineering chemistry that i'll be doing in this youtube channel will be common for first year be and first year btech students um, so uh, in this new syllabus according to the new syllabus of 2019 they totally five units if I am right, so um, there will be 25 units and then we will be doing one among the units in this video uh, which is uh, water technology and water treatment. So in uh, per video we will be doing one concept though it is easy or difficult we will be doing all the concepts. So the first concept or the first topic under water technology which is there in engineering chemistry's uh, part for first year BE and BTEC is um, um, sources of water. So now sources of water suppose we a very easy topic but in spite of that I thought uh, a, a video specifically for this will be really helpful because there are few specific points which you need to know even though it will be familiar I thought I will put that as a video so that you all can watch it and learn. So now we know what the basic sources of water are we have been learning that for a long time. So the most important source of water that is why I have highlighted it the most important source of water that everyone must know is rainwater because rainwater is the thing which fills up the river lake sea and underground it fills up all the other other important sources of water so rainwater is the most important source of water and we all know how rain is formed rain is formed because of water cycle and then we have, we have learned how water cycle works which is generally not important for us the point is this is a misconception where we all think that the most i mean the purest form of water that is known is rainwater that is why in many places they they store rainwater and then they consume it so what the what the actual thing is the rainwater is not very pure so whenever you get rainwater it is always better to heat it once and then uh, use it for consumption cooking or any other purposes the reason why rainwater is not very pure is presence of is because of the presence of few oxides so and then we know what the oxides are sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide so many oxides are there and these oxides will be in its as it will be in its acid form because it is this oxides would have mixed with water and will form an acid so you know how acids are formed an acidic oxide when it combines when it is dissolved in water completely it forms an acid so these acids will act as impurities and apart from that there are certain very very minute dissolved impurities and certain acidic oxides as well. So these oxides and, and then the few oxides which are in the form of an acid and then few dissolved impurities will serve as all the impurities present in rainwater. So because of which we generally say rainwater is not fit for direct consumption. If we, if we consume it directly we will definitely fall ill. So because of that it is always better you heat it and then use it for consumption. So this is a misconception that uh, rainwater is uh, a purest form of water. The purest form of water is distilled water and it probably is 99.9% .9 pure and the 0.1% of purity uh, which cannot be um, guaranteed. Cannot be guaranteed, there can be certain very very minute impurities. So the, the purest form of water that is known to us is distilled water but you cannot consider that as a source of water. That is the first point which I wanted to tell you and next thing is river water, lake water, sea water and underground water. So now the basic source for all these water is rainwater. So now this rainwater is the one which keeps filling in all the sources and then the water body is formed and then we make use of the other sources for water. So now uh, when you take river water, river water is supposed to be it has a lot of impurities. So now let's just see what the impurities are. The first impurity is the impurity which is already present in rain, rain water. As rain water fills in the river water, you can consider that as a first form of impurity which is presence of certain oxides. Apart from that, when the river flows along its course, there are certain organic compounds which flows along with the water. That will also serve as some impurities which is not fit for human consumption. That is also mixed with the water. And apart from that, we know in rivers as well as lakes, we throw a lot of things. We throw a lot of things and which is inorganic waste. These waste are completely not fit for consumption. It is toxic substances. Though all the substances are toxic substances. So even that will also serve as one uh, form of impurities. So the toxic substances that we uh, throw into the river, the organic substances which gets mixed with the water as it flows along its course and then the impurities which are already present in rainwater are the major um, impurities present in rain, uh, river water. Lakes also has the same amount of impurities or same uh, impurities as present in river water but then the level of impurities the amount of impurities is a little lesser 
so that is why it is a little so when you when you compare the purity of river water lake water lake water is a little purer than river water because the level of impurities are lesser and next one is sea water sea water is the most impure form of water that is known to man and then we know why because there are around 4% 4% of dissolved salts in it it's up, it's an approximate value completely an approximate value there are totally 4% of dissolved salts among this four, among these 4% of dissolved salts around 2.8 or 3% of these salts are uh, these salts is common salt or nacl sodium chloride this is the most important salt and no wonder the sea water is very very salty so that is why before using sea water you need to the water needs to undergo a process in the desalination so which is reverse osmosis desalination process which is the main principle of desalination process is reverse osmosis in the subsequent videos you'll be knowing what reverse osmosis is and how it helps in desalination so when you take this re water and then when you, uh, you when you actually have to use it for um, human purposes what you're supposed to do is first uh, the water should undergo primary and secondary treatment so again in the subsequent videos you'll be doing about treatment of water primary and secondary treatment where the primary treatment involves the removal of debris and other floating substances which is easily it can be easily picked or which can be easily removed by uh, filtration and other processes and secondary treatment you pass it through various substances uh, it undergoes aerobic uh, it undergoes it, it will pass through many digesters in aerobic conditions and anaerobic conditions to make use of many bacteria for that and then the secondary treatment also occurs after the secondary treatment is over since it is sea water some amount of salt will still be present that is why it undergoes desalination process and this desalination process involves reverse osmosis so it undergoes these three processes to make sure that sea water is fit for consumption so you sea water is generally not fit for consumption only after it undergoes primary treatment secondary treatment desalination process which basically involves your reverse osmosis principle you can make use of sea water so i hope i've made myself clear and then the last one is underground water so how is underground water obtained as i've told you before it is just the it is just a role of rain water apart from that apart from rain water you can make use of river water as well when river water water from lake or rain water when it pre collates through the minute pores formed by a group of stones so imagine there's a group of stones and then when this water flows through the stones what happens is through the minute holes which are formed it will form underground water all the water gets stored below and then forms underground water and this underground water is also not pure the first reason uh, the which is the list of impurities which is the impurities from river water impurities from rain water all the impurities will be present because it is coming from that only and apart from that there is a special effect of water on the stones so now which is hydration and uh, there are a lot of things so uh, apart from hydration um, the, in case of iron salts are present oxidation of the iron salt followed by its own hydration it also occurs so the effect of this this water which precolates through the stone has its own effect on the salts which are present underground as well as on the stones which are present on the surface so in the next video we'll be do, we'll be studying about the various effects of water uh, on the stones as well as the salts or the any other rocks which leads to the fact that underground water is also impure and is not fit for consumption so the effects of water on these things will be discussed in detail in the next video so please continue watching these videos uh, like share and subscribe to my channel as well